Welcome back to the Cognac Jewellery School. Today we're going to be making heart-shaped cabochon earrings like these ones. Let's get started. For this project, you will need a pair of heart-shaped cabochon gemstones. I'm using blue opal rose cuts today, some fine silver bezel strip, a sheet of silver, some earring wire, and two small jump rings. These and other gemstones are available from the Cognac Jewelry School shop, which is linked in the description. Start by wrapping your bezel strip snugly around one of your gemstones before marking the point where the ends cross over with the scribe. Remove the excess using a pair of snips, then repeat the same process again with your second stone. Don't worry about trying to follow the indented curve on the top of the heart at this point. We'll address that later. Next, take a flat file and create a right angled end so that the trimmed bezel strip comes together to create a perfect join. Flux the join of one of your bezel strips and place a piece of hard solder over the join before soldering closed. As always, keeping a pokey stick on hand in case your solder decides to make a run for it. Quench and repeat with your other setting. Once both joins are soldered, pop them both in the pickle. When your settings are nice and clean, Remove them from the pickle and bring them to your bench to check that they fit snugly around your stones. If you find that they're too small at this point, don't panic. There's an easy hack to stretch them to fit and there's a link in the description that shows you how. As you can see, our setting fits around most of the heart, but it doesn't fit around the top curve. Now's the time to rectify that. Grab a pair of rounded pliers and use one side to gently push the silver into the groove on top of the heart. Once you're happy with the shape of your bezel, file one side flat on a piece of emery paper and we're going to solder it onto a back plate. Cut out a piece of silver sheet that is just a little bigger than your setting. I'm using a saw to do this, but snips are fine. Then put a cotter pin on a fire brick, followed by the piece of silver sheet you've just cut out, apply some flux, and finally put your setting on the top. Now place small amounts of hard solder on the back plate around your setting. Three will probably do the trick, then solder. Once you see the shiny solder line running all the way around your join between your setting and your back plate, turn off your torch, quench, and repeat the process with your second setting. Once both your back plates are soldered on, pop them both in the pickle. Now for the tricky bit, the sawing. The aim is to try and saw as close to your setting as possible without sawing through your bezel strip. Take it slowly, and don't worry if there's a border of silver around the edge. We'll file it back later. Once you've sawed out your back plate, file away any excess sheet using a flat file. Follow the curves of your bezel strip, taking care not to overfile the fine silver walls of your setting. Keep filing until the wall of your setting is completely flat and you can't distinguish the silver back plate from the bezel strip sides. Once you're happy with your settings, it's time to polish. I'm using emery sponges here as they're particularly good for getting into tricky angles and curves like the ones on a heart. Working from the coarsest grit up to the finest, sand the back and the sides until all the file marks have disappeared and they begin to shine. Oh, and now would be a really good time to check that your stones still fit. It's important with this type of setting to make sure that we have the right wall height for the chosen stone. If the walls of your setting are too high, you'll end up covering too much of your gemstone, but equally if you file them too low, there won't be enough metal to hold your stone in place. Often, you can just sand your setting upside down on some emery paper to file down the walls, but if your gemstone has uneven wall heights, like these hearts do, you'll need to file some sections down further than others. It's always worth taking your time with this bit. Keep filing and checking against your stone until you have an even setting height all the way around. Now's the time for your final solder. Pop your tiny jump ring flat on your fire brick with the open side of the ring touching your setting. Flux the join. Nobody said this wasn't going to be fiddly as. Now place one piece of hard solder on or between the join where your jump ring meets the setting and solder. And as always, keep a pokey stick on hand for when your solder and jump ring try to get walkabout. Quench, repeat with the second setting and you should have two heart shaped settings ready for the pickle. Once your settings are clean, it's time to set your gemstones. Today, I'm setting with a pusher and a rounded burnisher. Using your pusher, begin by moving the metal in toward the stone a little at a time. You might have to go around your stone a few times, which is absolutely fine. Just be really careful not to crimp the metal at the point of your heart. Once your silver is touching your gemstone all the way around, smooth it out with your burnishers, making sure to get right in the groove on top of your heart, which will have been tricky to get to with your pusher. Once set, Polish with a white polishing pad to bring out the shine and pop them on a pair of earring wires. If you would like to know how to make your own earring wires, check out the link in the description for a lesson on how to do this. And voila, a beautiful pair of silver heart-shaped cabochon earrings 
that's not a mouthful. The perfect gift for someone you love, or better still, for yourself. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and hopefully see you all again very soon.